All right. So any, uh, I have a feeling you have some, some weird UFO stories. UFO? Really? <laughs> no, nothing. I've got, I got one, one okay. really brief one where I was just kind of, it wasn't enough to like have me fear for my life or come up okay. with my own um, abduction encounter, but I had a very brief thing on the Appalachian trail. Oh, nice dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so there's this, this concept, I don't know if it's, if it, if it's really a term that goes beyond like the, the long distance hiker community, okay. but um, are you familiar with the term cowboy camping? No, this is, I, I, I'm interested in it though. Okay. So we'll learn, yeah. we'll learn okay. some things. Okay. Good, so, good, 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 good. Uh, cowboy camping is basically when you, you lay out your bedroll and then okay. you just lay out under the stars. Oh, you know, sure. No tent, mm -hmm. no, no like hammock or anything like that deployed. You're not in a, a shelter. You're just like, you just, it's just you, your, your sleeping bag and the, the, the big sky. Right. That's awesome. So I was on a, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what state it was. It was in like the new England portion. It was later in the trail. I might've been up in your, like your territory, like Connecticut or Massachusetts. Okay. Um, but, uh, there was a tent platform and I, I went and I was laying down on it. And I had my bed roll out and I just was like, it's a nice, cool night. It's not too cold. And, and, um, the stars are out and, you know, there were trees, but they were all kind of spaced out around me. So I just had a good unobstructed view of the night sky. And there were a lot of, um, stars out, you know, I always, you know, ever since I had that moment, like the first time I was on a trail and I saw the, the meteors, um, mm. meteorites or comets or whatever they were, um, I was, you know, I was, I was trying to make a point to do that because you, because you, you go through half of the trail and there's not a lot of like moments for that because you're in what they call the green tunnel. So you sure. don't have yep. a lot of yep. like, you, you don't, you don't have a very good opening to, to see the night sky usually. So outside of that, you know, I was looking up and I saw something and thought it was, it was figured it was just a satellite you know going up it was really far out just a little mm. blip it was like the same brightness as the stars and it was just kind of going across the night sky and then it just did like one of those oh my goodness and i'm like I, I was yeah. like there's not there's i don't think a plane can do a maneuver like that like and it was way up there you know it was in space and satellites are just kind of in orbit so yeah. something just did a 180 and like went the other way and I just, I was, that's pretty much the extent, like, <laughs> like I was just kind so, of, huh, I guess they, they might be among us after all. Like, and then it that, was that's just kind funny, of, yeah. then I just kind of like went to bed. Like. <laughs> Cause um, when I had Cliff Berkman on, he pretty much, he had the same thing happen to him. Really? Like he's watching something going across. I thought he thought it was like the international space station or somewhere like that. And uh -huh. all of a sudden, boop or wow. and yeah like, dude yeah <laughs> something's out there man something weird oh man did you meet any uh interesting people when you were hiking on the trail any uh interesting characters or yeah there were some some unusual people um yeah i actually met like a trail legend on oh, a really? random trip uh in uh, i was the first time i went out west trying to get back to um california okay i was trying to do it by road trip but i didn't i had a minivan that wasn't up to the challenge and um i was on a section of the missouri trail or the mm. ozark trail in missouri okay. in mark twain national forest which has got a little sure, bit of yeah. bigfoot activity and i actually met this guy called nimble will nomad and he is like mm. this he's probably 80 now and he hikes like all of the national scenic trails and wow and he does like all these long hikes and he's got some books out on the subject he's a big like he is like one of the biggest faces of like long distance hiking and i just really? stumbled across him on oh, like so this cool. random road trip yeah yeah and um i hiked about eight and a half miles with him that day oh man and, and he's like, so what brings you out here? And I'm like, I might be looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> and <laughs> and he, he told me that he actually had on the Pacific Northwest Trail um, come across a footprint. 
he's like, and it looks like similar to a footprint, like of a human, but it was, it was probably 16 inches long. And I'm like, whoa, he's like, wow. he's a much wider as well. So he described your typical Bigfoot track. Totally. And then wow. he said, and I also smelled like this really unusual smell oh. in the air. Um, yeah. And I just figured it was that critter and <laughs> kept going. <laughs> and so, so it's kind of to have a, not only meet somebody that's relatively well known, Mm -hmm. um but also have them tell you a bigfoot story was pretty cool that is really Um, cool but on the trail itself on the at i spent a lot of time with this family uh, from texas and i would go and visit them every time i go to the conference um but they they had like a whole family it was um trying to think how many there was a mother and a father and then they had um one, two, three, four, five kids. Uh, wow, one they were son, four daughters. Hiking. Yeah, yeah, and they all Ooh. did it, and I, I, I did the wow. whole thing with them. Um, we started oh, around the same time, and we'd crisscross okay. each other because I would, I would stay oh, wow. up late, or I'd stay, I'd stay asleep. I'd sleep in. They'd get up bright and early, slow mm-hmm. and steady, and then I yep. would wake up late, and then just. Psh- like rocket past them and so i'd always see them and then we crisscross and after a while we're just like why don't we just hike together you know it seems like we're not making any like particular progress over one another so um so yeah i ended up doing probably maybe a little less than half the trail with them but cool but yeah the youngest one was like 10 or 11 at the time she was 10 years old. I can't imagine that, man. It's and like she carried like all, most of her, yeah. her, her equipment. Yeah, she it was everybody was was doing 20 mile days. Like it was wow. it was pretty impressive. Um, and yeah, I've kind of stayed in touch with them and I go out and see them from time to time. But um, there's cool. a bunch of creative different people. Um, mm-hmm. everybody has their trail names too. Yeah, that's um, there's like a that guy part of it. Yeah, there's a guy named Pringles. Who nice. hiked southbound? He had like a, a physical condition or something, and and he couldn't carry a pack with him. So he would basically he'd have a light pack, and he he had two cars on the trail, hmm. and he would drive them up. Like he would he would have one car parked here. He would drive the other one, and then he would hike down to the first car. So he was making northbound oh. progress by by walking southbound. So when he got back to the other vehicle, he would like oh, hopscotch it ahead of the other one, the next yeah. road crossing, and then bring it down. I've thought about doing hikes like that too. It seems kind of, you know, it's it's, it's one way of doing it. So he he still yeah. hiked the entirety of the trail that way. But he he was named Pringles because he always hiked with a couple cans of Pringles, and he'd share the chips with people that he passed oh, by. Cool. So yeah. I always liked uh, reading the. Do they still do it where they have the trail? registers people write in at the uh, shelters yeah Yeah, the logs yeah some of them were pretty pretty funny um yeah totally the the one i I still there's one every time we talk about trail logs there's one that comes into my head um we were in new hampshire the first big mountain that we have to walk in the white mountains you know which is well regarded as one of the more challenging parts Mm -hmm. of the trail yeah um is is mount musalaki and so somebody drew a picture of moose plus tonsil hockey equals <laughs> moose hockey. And they drew this really intricate picture of a bull moose and a cow moose, like making out. And wow. it was, I was impressed by it. Cool. I was like, wow, like this person needs to, they got a career here. They just had to like evolve past the, the trail yeah. log. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, there's some definitely very vibrant, colorful, creative character that you meet out there. Totally. Dude, Southern New Hampshire has some weird Bigfoot activity too, man. I don't know really? if you've ever, yeah. Um, which was surprising to me because I grew up just south of New Hampshire in Massachusetts. It's like, yeah, supposedly it's super squatchy in Southern New Hampshire. It blew my mind, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were there were a lot of places up there. There's, I guess it's it's difficult for me to go to some of these environments and see how some animals like mm. how could something like Bigfoot live out there? Yeah, because I'm used to seeing like a lot of berry bushes and oh, sure, acorns yeah. and and nut trees and stuff, and it makes sense there. Um, but I don't know, like, like you see how something like a moose can survive in some of those areas, 
True. But you have to think about what the moose has in terms of adaptations. Like this moose, the moose name means like twig eater, you know? So, so it's like, it's, it's eating like the bark and sticks off of trees because there's, Mm. and, and, and it's adapted a way to get that little nutritional value out of something that isn't normally a food source. And so to, to have a, a discussion about, you know, whether or not, you know, something like a primate, which needs, needs a lot more, you know, that yeah, true. that's, true, that's true. a, that's, I mean, sometimes you can, you can figure out, you know, well, maybe this here or that, but I, I don't know if I, if I'm really in that ballpark of Bigfoot um, researchers that thinks that it's like a full on carnivore or, or can even adapt to be like <clears throat> a regular carnivore, you know, I yeah. think they're like, there's probably some hunting prowess there on occasion, good mm-hmm. foraging ability for small, you know, protein, small mammals and stuff. And then maybe a, an intelligent mind that can exploit things like roadkill or scavenging. Right. But, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm one of those guys that thinks it can like in a book run, just like run down a deer without any type oh, of yeah. stealth, Ooh. you know? Yeah. Right. That would be wild to see my goodness. But crazy man wow thanks for hanging out uh, a little bit longer and um sharing some stories it's been fun ron yep. um definitely definitely i'm gonna go and uh check out sasquatch society that sounds really cool all but, right um, hopefully i'll get some new fresh content <laughs> out <laughs> shake off the the uh procrastinative there you habit. go 